Hello? Hello, Ms. Tate. This is Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I was uh, talking to Tiffany, and uh, she was telling me there were some concerns you had and questions, so I just wanted to speak to you and make sure we can address everything and make sure you're happy with everything. Oh, absolutely. Let me let me call my, my friend because she's she's um, she knows a lot about this kind of stuff, so I'm going to call her, okay? Her name's Melissa. One okay. moment. Um, one moment. No problem. Hey, Melissa? Yes. Okay, are you there, sir? Yes. Hi, Melissa. This is Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars. How are you today? I'm fine, Chris. How are you? Good. Uh, I was just uh, in contact with uh, everyone here, and I just wanted to make sure that um, any questions or concerns were answered and uh, make sure everybody's on the same page. Was there something you were concerned with in regards to the uh, contract? Oh, yes. So first of all, um, we we wanted to know if there was the inspection period, because normally inspection period is 7 to 10 days. And you have the inspection period for 30 days up until the time of closing, which means you can back out up until the day of closing. That's correct. Okay. So, so why is that? What do you What do you mean? Why is it? Why Why are you guys not doing a normal Why are you guys not doing a normal inspection period? Why do you need 30 days for inspection? Uh, because one, I was told that someone is here handling the property as far as getting inside of it, things like that. So I just put 30 days. I mean, I could change it if it if it's a big deal. I mean, it's really more so to give time for them to be able to show the property and do what they need to do on getting whatever they need out of the house and everything. Well, I think the house has been cleared out. Okay, but well, that's fine. Is that your have you only seen the house? Have you, have you have you seen the house yet? I have not seen the property yet. No. Oh, so you've made the offer without even seeing it? That's correct. Oh, okay. okay. What about 12.2? The the and the um paperwork 12.2. Uh, let me pull it up here. What is it in reference to? Uh, um, I don't know. I I shut it down because I was just so frustrated with it. Uh, it's a memorandum. Oh, the memorandum part. So, yeah, that's just there just basically letting you know in the event once we execute this contract and say um, somebody calls you tomorrow and say, oh, I'll give you 300000 for it, you're not going to go sign another contract with another person and try to sell it. We do a lot of deals here in St. Louis uh, and really all over the United States. And so a lot of times that's just something letting you know that in the event that if somebody does go and try to put this, you know, under contract for some higher price or some promise in the future, like within our time frame, that we can execute a, a memorandum on the property. That's all that says. That's just letting you know that in the event somebody else comes along, because it, it's happened before, where we would put a property under contract, say, for 100000 and we'll come back and say, oh, yeah, we're not selling anymore. And then we find out that they're selling it to somebody else. All right, and, right. Okay, so. You, so... And you probably know that, because you do some real estate, I guess, or something, or you're a, a real estate agent or something. No, we're not in the, no, we're not agents. I, oh, okay. I work for the state of Illinois. And so, oh, okay. Yeah, that just puts you on notice that any event that, you know, if if we get this executed and we go through the process and we're ready to buy it, somebody else okay. can come along and we'll give right. you two dollars okay. more. Right, That's I heard that part. So you want to record the contract onto the deed? No. That's, That's only if we put a memorandum. We're not recording anything. Everything's going through the title company. That's only in the event that if somebody else tries to go under contract with you guys and try to give you 300000 for it, supposedly, and make some promise and try to kick us out of the deal, basically. It happens. It's not something that you would do. We just have to put people on notice that in the event somebody comes along and try to buy for more money, so-called, because, you know, people make claims all the time in this business. So, Miss um, well, what were your compliments? But how do they do that if there's uh, you have it under contract? How do they do that then if you already have it under contract? 
Well, this contract basically gives us permission to record uh, and put a link, not a, not a cloud the title, basically. It would cloud the title to say, hey, this already is under contract. Joe Bob Company can't come along and try to buy the property from you for a higher purchase price tomorrow. That's all it is. It's just putting you on notice that any event that something comes up and oh, I want to back out and I want to sell it to somebody else for a million dollars more, we can't just back out like that. That's all it is. So we're not recording anything. It's just letting you know any event. Well, how does how does that how do, how does it come off though? I'm I'm confused. At closing. At closing, because we're going to buy the property. What what happens if you guys back out? We we just back. We'll tell you. We'll let you know immediately. We'll say, hey, we well, can't how does do that, it. But how does that memorandum come off then if you back yeah, out? Yeah, but if you we're, if we're, you back out, then hold, that memorandum is on sure. the title. Yeah, hold on. No, that's not true. That's not oh. what he just said. Hold on, let me clean it up for you. We're not recording anything. This is only in the event if someone pops up, Joe Blow Company comes tomorrow and offer you $3 million for the house. You say, oh, I don't want to sell to you anymore, Chris. I want to sell to Joe Blow. That Then we would execute a memorandum. That's the only time. Before that, we're not putting any memorandums on any properties. This is just letting you know on notice that in any event that something comes up and the seller but tries if, to back out of the contract, right. we will put two parties for the memorandum. That's all it is. If I sign this contract, though, it's saying that you're allowed to. I'm enabling you to do that, and I'm not enabling you to do that. Is there a reason yeah, you would back right? out of it? Is there a reason that you would back out of the deal after the contract? No, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to wipe my hands clear of this fucking house. I don't want this house. I'm done with it. I'm saying if the, the verbiage on the contract states that I'm giving you access to put a memorandum on the house to to put your name so or, or whatever we, so it says seller agrees that buyer may execute acknowledge and record a memorandum of affidavit of this contract in the official records of the county that's basically putting the public on notice that this has a contract on this property that's all that is if we had to, we we don't have to. We normally don't. It only comes up every once in a while when somebody says, oh, somebody offered me $3 million and I already had it under contract with this guy, but I'm going to go try to get that $3 million. Right, it happens, right, but right. It, it's not a normal thing. This is a standard thing. We buy a lot of property. So this is just standard to make sure that in the event that that does happen, we can put a memorandum to say, hey, look, public notice, this is under contract. We're in the process of buying this property. So if any other buyers are coming along that want to buy this, y'all need to wait till either we're expired or leave the seller alone because things like this happen a lot in this business where they'll say, oh, okay. this house looks empty and somebody could just find this property driving down the street, say it looks empty. Let's send her a postcard or let's call her. Skip yeah, yeah, yeah. Call you. you see what I'm saying? It, this can go a lot of different ways. This just said letting you know that in the event if some buyer comes along and offers you right. a bigger okay. price for whatever reason, we yeah. can, but that doesn't mean we will. We, heard we that. can put a memorandum. That's all it means. Really that simple. And we're probably not putting a memorandum, just to be clear. This is only to protect us in the event that we have to in the future. Right, but I have to protect myself that you don't do that. Well, that's because what I'm then saying. I'm screwed. Then I'm screwed well, because if we put a memorandum on it. And so a memorandum is only putting the public on notice that there, this sale is in execution right now. That's all it is. It doesn't mean we own the house. We don't have any rights to the house other than we have a contract to say we can purchase the house. Now, after our expiration time is up, it's expired for whatever reason, then somebody can buy it. It just means while we're under contract, somebody can't come along and offer you $3 million. So That's if you're offering 105000 and you don't find a buyer within the 30 days till the closing, does that mean you can back out on the 30th day? So we're not looking to find a buyer. We're actually buying this property. But in the event that we do do that strategy sometime, but that's not what this one is. We do do wholesale transactions, if that's what you're referring to. We do those yeah. as well. But this particular property we're buying. So we buy in Florissant, Hazelwood, Afton, Oakville. I you know, mean, the but that, your contract looks like you're wholesaling it out. That's what I. Yeah, I mean, it's, everything on here says is being wholesaled out. I mean, it's like all over the place on here the, about it being signed and I'm putting a lockbox on and signing it out and everything else. Yeah, so all of this is to make this move as quickly and smoothly as possible. 
I mean, it's, it's no hidden, it's nothing, there's no secrets or anything like that. We like to be upfront with everybody and let you know exactly what's going on. We intend to buy the property. In the event mm-hmm. we don't buy it, we, we do have the right to assign the rights of this contract to another buyer, or sometimes we even assign it to another one of our entities because we hold properties in multiple entities. So this company, St. Louis Cash Buyers, we don't hold property in this name for obvious reasons. Yeah, I- it's in public record. So say yeah, if we want to say- form a new LLC, that says, you know, um, Waddell Street LLC or Wadsworth Drive LLC, if we wanted to create that, we can assign it to that without coming back to say, hey, can you sign another paper and make this a lot more paperwork and more drama? So we put all of this in one document, nice and clean, so we don't have to come back and do a bunch of stuff later. We make this easy and smooth, and we do these deals all the time. Are, are you an agent, Chris? I am not an agent. I'm a professional real estate investor. I, I actually specialize in stopping foreclosures, things like that. So I do a little bit more of the creative space. We buy houses subject to the existing financing sometimes. So we do a lot of different strategies. But uh, like I say, this one is just a pretty straightforward cash purchase. But you guys haven't even seen it yet. That's correct. So when are you going to see it? Soon as we can, probably tomorrow. Or soon so as you, you, you normally put houses under contract before you see them? 99% of the time. Yes, ma'am. Like I say, we do a lot of transactions. It's company policy that we put them under contract before we spend resources, send our contractors out, check all this stuff out. Cause we spend money on this. This is not anything for you. Just so you know how, you know, we basically work and really anybody that's, uh, you know, doing real estate as far as a, on a volume that we do. So we buy a lot of properties. We put them under contract. We start our process, do our walkthroughs. Um, and then we close on the deal. It's really that simple. And we try to make this as clean as possible on your side, the seller side, so you don't have to come back later for something that could have been done from the very beginning. And we'll get this all wrapped up for you here Uh, in a couple. Yeah, I I appreciate that. Where did you come up with the hundred and five? That was the price we came to. Uh, Okay, I mean that's what I'm. I know that's the price. uh, So so fixed up these properties. This property from the comps I saw was around a hundred and thirty. Um, somewhere in there, 130, 135, if I'm correct, remembering. Um, so we have to buy it at a little discount. Doesn't mean we're going to get rich on it or anything. We're going to fix it up, update the property to today's standard, to 2023 standard, and probably going to hold this property long term. So we're not flipping this one. We're actually going to be holding this one long term as a long term hold. Okay. As a rental, as a rental property. That's typically what we I do. Mean, yeah. So we so we I, do I, traditional I, rentals and we also do uh, traveling nurses and things like that. So we do a lot of different strategies. Not to bore you with it, but we do quite a bit of things. Some things people don't even know no. you can do with real estate. So what, no, would, what would you rent this? What would you rent this house for? I have no idea right now. You're buying a house and for rental, you know what you're going to rent it for? Let's see. That's cross. So I work in the uh, like I say I I actually am the one that deals with buying the property the property managers and stuff they deal with all the rentals and all of that stuff I don't deal in it I stay completely okay. in my lane Thanks. I don't get involved in yeah. the, you know you know the back end stuff because this real estate is a lot of moving parts if you don't you know a lot of people don't realize it so we have a team yeah. that deals with all of this stuff people who go fix the property people who do the property management I do the buying you know so it just depends on you know yeah. what the situation Missy, is Missy you know we we don't know any of that we're, I'm I'm just trying to sell this property. I was property. just curious how much they're going to rent this thing for. I mean, well, you just said because well, I thought he told the wholesaler at first, and then now they're saying now they're said fixing up, and now they're going to rent it. I'm a little confused. I, I'm who said, just, who I'm said they're wholesaling it? Who said that? Nobody. In the I very didn't beginning, say. in the very the beginning, you did. And well, the contract did. And in the very beginning, you said that when we, when she first got you on the phone or got me on the phone, you said about wholesaling it. That's why I was like confused. Mm-hmm. No, no, I want to be clear. We intend to buy this property. That's that's the that's the shortest way I can put it. We intend to buy this property. However, we do reserve the right to assign this contract to another entity if we need to as far as closing. That won't have anything to do with your end. Okay. It's all on so, our back end. so this is this is what my my number one thing about this um contract because I'm not comfortable signing it with the fact that you could add that memorandum and then I'm going to be screwed in the end. Why would you be screwed? Because if you record it, hold on, let me see my notes. 
I was so I want to if be you clear, record the contract onto the deed and then if you if we don't close on it and then we sell it for more than and and just for the record, I'm not trying to sell this house for shit. I'm letting Tiffany take care of it because I walked away from this house four years ago. But I'm just saying, if if you record a contract onto the deed and then you don't close and you back out, I've already signed initial this contract and then we would have to pay you the difference after via the title company. So that's not necessarily true. So we're not recording anything on the deed. Let's be clear about no, that. No, no, I know you're not yet, but that the verbiage on the contract is that you so are that you, can. you can. That's what I'm ar that, so so I'm arguing so, like the points of the contract that I I don't agree with. This is the biggest point of the contract that I don't agree with that you're saying you can do that. So it normally so doesn't be, happen, but you but you can yeah. do that, and I'm not comfortable with that so part let, of it. Yeah, let me let me help you out. So we're not recording anything on any deeds at all. We cannot record anything no. like that. Only no, thing we but can the do, Yeah, I'm going to help you out. So what we can do is record on public record to say, look, we have a contract. If we decide, if for whatever reason our contract expires and we don't close, then there's not it expires. There's nothing we can do about that. But if we, it's just letting people know that we have it on contract. That's it, and it puts the whole contract so, on public record. So look, if we, you we put are, that memorandum, if you record the contract under the deed, and after 30 days the contract expires. Isn't that still that memorandum on the deed? No. So let me clean it up again. There is nothing going on any deed. Nothing. The word deed is not the right word. We're using the wrong word here. So the seller okay, agrees so that the buyer may execute. I'm reading uh, the actual memorandum line here. Seller agrees that buyer may, which may, we already talked about that, may execute, acknowledge, and record a memorandum or affidavit of this contract in the official records of the recorder of the county that the property is located. Seller's signature on any affidavit or memorandum is not required for recorded of the same. That's all it says. It doesn't say anything about a deed or anything. We cannot just put something on your deed. That doesn't work like that. So we just saying that we have a contract and we can put public notice to say, hey, look, everybody, we have a contract. Back off this seller. We're buying this house. That's all that is. It has nothing to do with a deed or anything. Of okay, yeah, any I was using stuff. the I was using the wrong verbiage. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. So we can't do anything oh. to your deed, and, it, and it's only saying that in the event that we may record the proof that look, everybody, we have it under contract. That's all it is. That's no deeper than that. Okay. And and that and that um, falls off on expiration. So if we had to do that, but we're not doing anything like that because I don't see any issue like that coming up. You want to sell it, we want to buy it, and it's really nothing any deeper than that, to be honest. No, it's not. I'm I'm just trying to be free and clear of it. Yeah, and I want to clean it up for you and make sure you understand everything because I know this stuff can get confusing. You know, real estate and and that's why oh, we you know do everything. yeah. And that's so why we do it in this way because we come across a lot of crazy stuff in this business. You know what I mean? Just, I mean, you wouldn't believe some of the things, the stories I can tell you. They're like, well, wow, I what think happened? part of this, I, I think this contract, some of it has little crazy things going on because I, I am just not on a grant. Um, but and it's not a normal contract. This isn't like a contract that we've seen before, like that when we sold our house. So I, I mean, you guys, so you guys don't use regular real estate contracts. You have your own contract. Uh, this was by our real estate attorney. That's correct. So we get all, like I said, we do enough volume that we put these different protections in here to make sure that everything's clean, where we don't have to come back and forth and say, hey, well, let me bug you one more time about one more thing. We don't want to bug you. We want to put it under contract, go through our process, close this thing up, get your money wired over and be done with it clean and simple. So that's why we just structure it in this way. Um. Okay, so the 105, is that a solid offer, or once you see the property, that's going to fluctuate? It should not. It should be 105, and we're paying the closing cost as well. So there's that's actually your clean number. The only thing you'll have to pay is that underlying loan. I think she said it was around 61000 something like that. They'll take the proceeds out of there, uh, and the difference will be wired over to you. And you can you can uh, let the, co the title company know where you want that sent to whether you want it wired to you or come pick up a check. So some people just get it wired. 
what does wired mean? Like EFT? A bank wire. So they, they, they actually get your bank account routing number and your bank account and send it straight to your account. It takes about 10 minutes. Okay. Are you, are you local? I'm here in St. Louis. That's correct. So can we change the inspection period to no more than 10 days? Yeah, that's fine. I can go change it. That's not a problem. That's re that's reasonable. I was just trying to give you all enough time to deal with what you have to deal with. I can definitely do that. Uh, well, I, well, could you elaborate that what you matter. mean by that? that? Yeah, that doesn't matter to you. I mean, that shouldn't matter to you guys. The inspection period has to do with you guys, is not not them. That has what to do, do you with, mean? With, that has to do with the buyer, not the seller. The inspection period. Because, yeah, I mean, otherwise he can back out all the way up to 30 days. If you do 10 days, I mean, the, the, the buyer, still, the seller can still go in up till the day he closes, no matter what, or the day that you guys close. So if anybody needs to get into the house to get anything out, they can sell up till the day before closing. Who's, there's still stuff left in the house, isn't there, Deirdre? I don't know. I think Tiffany Not stuff and anybody wants. Not anything that anybody wants, but is there still anything left in the house? I don't know. I was under the impression that they cleared it out last week. Oh, okay. I mean, Chris, do you know right. anything? Yeah, she said that most, I think everything is out, but uh, I'm not sure if everything is out. She said something happened with a clean out, but I don't know the details of it. And so that's why I just like to make it flexible so you have time to do whatever you need to do and make sure everybody but is not. The, but that doesn't have anything to do with the inspection period. The inspection period isn't for the sellers, it's for the buyers. The seller can go into their house up until the day they close. Oh, yeah, so that doesn't make any. So that doesn't make any. I don't understand why you keep saying that. Why do you so, keep saying that? Then that makes no sense. Because if you want to change it to ten days inspection, I said that was no problem. Was there another issue or anything that you had, or? Well, the only issue is that you keep saying that you're trying to give the buyer or the seller time, but that has nothing to do with the seller. It has to do with the buying buyer. <laughs> doesn't even do with the seller. Right. No, it, does, you are, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Yeah, it doesn't. That's correct. Yeah. I'm not saying anything different than other than that. So, okay, yeah, so he can I, change the 10 days here, the, so that's good. Days in here. I'm going to here change it right now. Give me a second. Okay, if we could change it to 10 days yep. for the inspection yep. period. And then do we have a closing date yet? Uh, yeah, no, that's why we have the information on there, yeah. they'll give us our actual closing date. Wait, Wait there's no closing you... date on the contract? No, no, there's not a closing date. There's actually a, let me see here. Yes, there uh, is. Actually, oh, yeah, it is one on here. It is one on here. Uh, let's say, it says, I'm trying to edit it right now so I can't see it. So give me a second. Um, I'm probably going to have to correct this and resend it because it's not letting me edit it. I'll, I'll correct this and change it to 10 days on here. Um, and we'll be closed up here. Oh, but before 30 days. So September 30th. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna say or, it's sooner, it. or sooner. Yeah. On or before or 30 days of the assignment contract subject to 12 day period or 120. What's that mean? You've got on here or a or, Okay, for the close of escrow on or before September 30th or within 30 days of the assignment of this contract subject to a 120-day period in which the buyer shall be permitted to clear any title problems. What does that mean? That's correct, because uh, just like in this uh, particular instance, there was a death. Sometimes um, they have to go through a probate or some type of other strategy to get the title clear, because I don't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it just gives us time to clear it up. That's all it is. In the event that there's okay. liens or something on the property or there's an issue with the title, because this stuff comes up all the time, like I say, and uh, this gives us time to deal with it. If there's a title issue, we yeah. have time to deal I with guess it. It's just, weird. it's just worded weird. It may, it's, it just, it's worded weird. This is, or within 30 days of assignment of this contract subject to 120-day period in which the buyer sell, seller shall be permitted to clear any title problem. It's, yeah, just in case there's it, any it, title issue. So say if we had to go but through a probate or something, that's not a problem. Well, I mean, since Tiffany has power of attorney, it shouldn't have to go through probate, right? Uh, not necessarily. So, um, well, uh, Deirdre, you're a on power title. of attorney, you're typically, a you're on power, title. yeah, typically a power of attorney goes off at the uh, upon someone's death. 
but the title company is going to probably have them do an affidavit of airship and some other documents to get that cleared off that way because um, it's still titled in the decedent's name. So when it's well, but when it's, somebody, titled, it's still titled. It's still titled in Deirdre's name too. Yeah, exactly, and that's why we have to have her aware of everything going on here, and that's why I want to make sure that we had everybody involved that's on title. That's why, yeah. yeah, that's why she has to sign because it's everything still titled in her name too. So correct. Yes, the binary, right? Yep. Okay, so so I know this is way down the line, thirty days, but so what happens when the contract goes through and we sell it? And the the mortgage company gets their mortgage, then in my my divorce since my name is how how do you guys do that? Do you say well, they okay, don't do that? The title company, the title yeah, company, the title company does all of it. Yeah. They don't That's give you a check. Company. The title company does. Oh, okay. Yeah, they deal with all of it. Any kind of paperwork stuff, the title company deals with all of it, and that's why we have them do it because they're the best at it. They're better than us with that part. Do you know we what title company it. they use? Yeah, vision title. It's on there. It's on vision? the contract. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Do the, do the sellers have to use the same title company? You don't have to, but we're paying for it. So, I mean, that's totally up to you. If you want to go pay for your own, that's no problem. I mean, that's more money out of your pocket, but, you know, can't tell you what. So, for you so guys to know. pay for it, then for you guys to pay for it, well, because it doesn't say that in there, so that's why I'm asking. For you guys to pay for it, you're saying that they have to use vision title. So uh, section 1.11 says that we're paying 100% of the of the title company's fees. Okay. So that section um, below there says that we're paying okay. all of it. So that just yeah, has but it doesn't have. say it. It doesn't say it has to be at your title company. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. That's correct. So if they go to their own title company, wait. So if they go to their own title company, then you guys will pay for it. Because it says that you pay 100%. Right. It doesn't say it has to be a specific title company. You, you can do whatever so title company that makes you feel better. But, you know, like I say, we do a lot of transactions, but that would, to be honest with you, that would just cause more friction. The more cooks in the kitchen cause more friction, but you can totally do whatever you choose to do. That's the short answer. Oh, okay. wait, 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 what kind of frictions would that cause? I don't, I don't understand. Because there's, there's, there's more people. Well, Anytime I'm more curious people now. Involved, he said that, so I'm kind of curious. Yeah, because, because I know when people. we closed in my house, I I mean we closed at two different title companies. It wasn't a, I mean there yeah, was no problem. I don't understand. It's not I'm not saying it can't be done, but it just it just puts more people involved. And whenever you got more people, you got more things. And then more well, what's this and what's that? And then everybody got more things right. to do. They might get it. things done in a certain way. You can do what you want. I'm not telling you you can or can't. I'm just saying it's totally up to you. But it can, just letting you know up front, it can cause more friction. More people in, in a transaction, just like a husband and wife. The husband want one thing, the wife wants something else. Or brothers right, and sisters right. want one thing. Whenever you got so more you gotta people go, you gotta go to uh, you got to go to Missouri to close, do you just? No, you don't. Okay. You don't have to come here. You don't have to come here. They can send you the paperwork. We do deals virtually all the time. Oh, no, um, I'm coming. I, I yeah, want to so. do it in person because I need to make sure that this shit's done and over. I know that's <laughs> right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'll make that change on here, and uh, we'll get you guys ready to go. Uh, any other questions? Where's for me Vision, to... where is Vision title? It's uh, the, the address is on a contract. It's right there. Everything's her, her, her email. I know. Yeah, I don't... It says it's on Manchester. Oh, no, it says it's on, oh, it's in Manchester. Yep. It's on Barrett's Office Drive. Okay, yep. so, like, oh, right near the White Castle, that area. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm picking we're closing four okay. there this month. So we we got well four here next month, I guess we should say September. Isn't that uh, where it is? Down at the bottom yeah. of the two hills. Okay. Okay. Um, Any other questions so, for me? Yes. Yeah, so you're going to change the. You're going to change. Can you put a date on the contract? Hello? To, yeah, I'm going to change it to a 10-day inspection period. That's fine. Yeah, and and can you put a walk the date that you're walking through, walking through the house? Can you put that on the contract? That would be. Uh, I can't tell you that because I don't know when the walk-through date will be. So you know, I, I don't want to put something in there that we can't abide by. So say if I put tomorrow, and for some reason tomorrow, the brother, son, whoever's here. 
is not available. We don't want to lock ourselves into something silly like that. You know, just being honest with you, that would be unrealistic. So we want to work with, you know, the person that's here that can show the property, but within that 10 day time period, that's when we'll do it. So I don't want to put something in there that we can't abide by. Everything we put down, we want to make sure we can do it. Okay. Can so, maybe yeah. narrow it down within three days? Would that be possible? Like, like what what are you saying? Well, what is today? Today is Tuesday. So do you think you're going to go through the property this week? I hope so, yeah. I want to get it done sooner but sooner rather than later, sure. Right, me too. Well, who are you in contact with? Are you in contact with Tiffany or Tiffany and Carrie? Tiffany. So just Tiffany. Um, okay. So then so she's yeah, going to go. There, no problem. Okay. Um, All right. Any anything else, Missy? Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Thank if you, you come up for with talking any other to questions, us. I'm still here. You can always call or text me anytime. If you come up with anything, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm totally reachable. I want to be transparent and work with you guys and make this as smooth as possible. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it so much. All right. You Thank all you, have a good Chris. Evening. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night.